Okay, so for you new tutors who are wondering like, how do you make a supply list? And CC has put out supply lists. You can find other supply lists like on CC Connected and on Facebook. But if you're like me and you just don't trust the supply list and you kind of want to see it for yourself, I'm going to show you how I do it. Now, I will say when I was a brand new director, um, I started with a supply list that was provided and I would go through the experiments um, and tweak it the way that I uh, felt like I should tweak it. But the other thing I want to say before we start looking at this, how to make the list of things you need. When I was a brand new director, I thought I'm going to just buy all the supplies I need in the summer for the entire year and it'll save me time later in the year. But what ended up happening was we would make tweaks, you know, as I got to know my community and the kids in the community, I would make tweaks on how we would do the experiments. I was seeing great ideas on Facebook and I was like, oh, I'd really rather do that. That makes a lot of sense. So in the end, I had bought some things that I didn't need and I still ended up having to buy things that I did need. So what I did year two and on was I would just plan one quarter at a time. At a time. So I would just look at um, one quarter's worth of supplies and buy that. I, I think in reality I did more like a semester um, because the, the way that CC does it, you do one you know, one quarter of these type of ones and then another quarter where they have um, made them up and it's pretty simple to do like one semester at a time. So if you just think about one semester at a time, then over Christmas or around Thanksgiving, whenever you wanna be preparing for semester two, then you can do this again. You'll have some experience, you'll know your students, your community better, you'll have supplies left over and you'll know what you wanna do. So I really suggest if you're a first year tutor, first year director rather, just do the first semester um, for now and tr just try and resist the urge to do the second semester. And then you'll be able to make an informed choice about what you wanna do for next year. You'll know whether that worked for you or whether it didn't work for you. Um, but this is certainly what works for me. So I'm gonna show you how I make, how I make um, my supply list. So, okay, so making a supply list, like we'll start with the Van Cleave experiments. Right here in the front, I photocopied um, from the foundations guide all three cycles and I just pasted it here in the front just so I have a quick reference of which experiments we're doing. So cycle one, we're doing number 45 for week one. So that is called baby bean. Um, so I'm just basically, I'm gonna look here. I'm not even gonna focus on what the experiment really is. I'm just looking at the materials and I'm seeing I need 10 to 12 pinto beans. And then, okay, so I might actually look a little bit and say, okay, we're dissecting a bean. So I think each kid can probably dissect a bean on their own. Plus, I would like there to be some extra beans in case they don't work out. And, you know, we know that in the grocery store, you can't buy like 25 beans. You're going to be buying like 300 beans. So on my list, I'm going to write bag of pinto beans. Okay, and that's going to be enough for my entire community. I don't care how big your community is. A bag of pinto beans is going to be plenty. Okay, now it says a baby food jar. Just because it says baby food jar does not mean you need to go collect glass baby food jars. You can use whatever. Well, here. Okay, let's look. Let's actually look. Let me be a good um, example person. It says place the bean in a jar and cover with water at home the day before. Oh, I wrote. See, this is helpful. See, I wrote here. Do that at home before and it says refrigerate in the jar overnight so yeah i'm as the director i'm actually going to be bringing in beans that have already been soaked which means i don't need 16 baby food jars for all the kids i really just need to soak the soak the beans okay so i don't need to add this to my supply list because i can just use a bowl i have at home no big deal so what i will need on community day is the beans themselves and paper towels to soak up the excess water okay and i shop i don't know about you but i shop at a uh, wholesale place and i always have a crap load of paper towels so i am not going to add paper towels to my list okay year one i thought i better not use anything that belongs to my personal family i'm going to buy everything separate it'll be cc paper towels Number one, that takes up a lot of space. Number two, the reality is if you happen to have a little bit of extra materials money, it's yours to keep. So you might as well use your family, you know, products if you have them. Um, 
like especially things like paper towels, just go ahead and use your own stuff. So I'm not gonna add that to the list. And now I did add, I wrote in here magnifying glasses because magnifying glasses is something you're gonna wanna invest in for your community. So you're gonna have these on hand, you're gonna use them year after year after year. So this is a really good week to have magnifying glasses. So if you don't already have them, if you're a brand new director, you're gonna add magnifying glasses to your, um, to your supply list because you want them for that, that week. And check that out. That is all you need for this week one. All right. So like week two says it's number 54 telegraph lines. Oh, and just to show you, I, and I make videos for all the science things, but I left this in here from the last time we did this. And clearly we drew a picture to help kind of take up some time. And, um, it might even tell you to do that. See, I'm not reading through the science cause that's not what we're doing right now. I'm, I did make little tabs last time to kind of help me know, um, just to get, get there quicker. Okay, telegraph lines. Look right here. It says materials, string, and a helper. Again, if you've got string laying around your house, use the string you already have. Don't go buy brand new string because all they're going to be doing is stretching string between two things and like plucking it. So you don't need any kind of like special crazy string. So just get yourself some string. You know, sure, we'll go ahead and write it on the list. Uh, if you don't, if you don't have any string in your house and remember, this is my like shopping list. So if you do have string in the house, don't write that down. That's a real easy week. This is one where we're going to be doing two. Here's the other one. Belly up. We're going to need water. Check. Got that plastic sandwich bag that zips closed. Okay. Again, if you keep ginormous containers of Ziplocs in your house, then you don't need to add that to the list. But I probably will add it to my list because um, I just wanna make sure that I have enough, probably for one per student, but that's something you're gonna to wanna to figure out here. You might just read through it real quickly and see um, what it is that we're doing this. Okay, I have a, a note right here. Timo, uh, tutors will demo this or will students do it too? Maybe only the older kids. So. I think this is something I would talk about with my tutors. I honestly don't remember what we did the last time. Um, but it certainly indicates to me that we're not going to need one per student. So probably just a normal amount of Ziplocs, you know, maybe 20-ish. I don't really know. And maybe some, some straws, a few straws. Because at a minimum, you're going to want one straw per tutor if you do it as a demo. Um, if you do only the big kids, you might need 20. So like, just like a pack of straws should, should do you. And then a large bowl. I already have a large bowl. Don't go, don't go buy a CC large bowl. Just bring one from home. I'm saying that because I was just so silly my first year and I like bought a big bowl just to be a CC big bowl. That's not necessary. All right. Week three, 57. Oh, here's string again. Look at that. So we're using string again. So if you feel like you had enough string for the other one, but not enough string for this week also, then maybe you invest in some string. Rulers, that's something you probably need to invest. You definitely need to invest in for your community. So, you know, if you're brand new, you're going to want to, you're going to want to buy rulers and have them for every single cycle. Wooden stakes. Okay, this is one of those things where it's like, well, I don't have wooden stakes, but I have metal camping stakes. That is totally fine because all you're doing is making a square space and you just need a way to hold the string down. So just use the things you have on hand. You could even use chair legs. Like you could take little kid chairs outside and wrap string around that. So you don't have to buy everything that's listed here. Use the things you have on hand to save yourself money. I mean, it is totally fair. Scissors, that's another thing you're gonna wanna invest in for your community to have. So go ahead and buy good ones and plan to use them year after year after year. Colored pipe cleaners in multiple colors. This is something that you could, um, uh, you cut these up and I think it actually, the scissors are probably for you to use at home to prepare for this one uh, because I think when you give them to your classes, they're probably already cut up. But anyway, okay, colored pipe cleaners. And as I'm reading through the um, experiment, we're going to be dumping the pipe cleaners on the ground and then they're going to pick them up. So classes can reuse those, right? Absolutely. So I don't need eight packs of pipe cleaners for my eight classes. I probably just need like one because we're going to be cutting up the pipe cleaners, which is going to make a bunch of different, um, I need multiple colors. So I'm like one, 
you know, those Walmart multi-packs of pipe cleaners, that is going to be sufficient, I think. But, you know, this, these are the things for you to think through. This says timer. Do you have a timer at home? Just take the timer that you have at home. You don't need to buy a timer for CC. I will say that I've used timers multiple times in CC, so make sure you have a timer on hand. Okay, and here is another one. I'm not going to go through all of them. I think we're pretty much getting the idea, but um, this is ground temperature. This says we need a trowel, which is that little shovely thing. I bet you already have one. That seems like one of those things that lives in the garage that nobody ever uses, but everyone has. Um, so one, but probably per class that's doing science at the same time. So in our community, we have two classes doing science at the same time. So I'm going to need two trowels. And I actually, I know I have one. And the last time we went through this cycle, I think I only had one class doing it at a time. So I think I need one trowel and I might be able to borrow that from my parents. Um, I'll probably try to borrow one because... Uh, that's really not something I want to have in my CC supplies. So anyway, two outdoor thermometers. Now, this is something you probably will need to buy and invest in. And I think we use them several different times, um, just like these little these little thermometers. Cornerstone Educational Supply has great um, supplies when it comes to kind of some of the weirder things like this uh, that are very reasonably priced. So I suggest Cornerstone Educational Supply. Let me write that down so you can see. Cornerstone Educational Supply. Okay, so if you look them up, they're a really great resource. They're not the only one, but they're a great resource for some of these stranger supplies, including crayfish that we need this time, owl pellets, the rocks and minerals kits. They are, they're gonna be, the I, the, I love them. So they're an awesome, awesome place. So um, if you do look ahead and you make, you place one big order from them this year, you will not you will not regret it. White towel, I'm just going to take one that I own. Oh, and look at that. I added timer to that because um, it does say to wait five minutes. So, and a timer could always be a phone timer. You don't need to actually take a timer. So, you know, here's my list so far, and we have gotten through week three, and it's not super long. Um, so I'm going to stop now. Okay, so I, I went through three weeks of making a supply list with you. Um, you would do the same with the CC experiment starting with week seven. You would just look in the guide, see what materials it says you need, make your list, think through the things you already own at home. Of course, you don't wanna take anything that belongs to you personally that could get damaged and you would mind if it got damaged, but um, things that you just have laying around the house that you don't mind taking to CC, then that's going to save you money rather than buying them special for CC. And it also helps uh, cut down on the supplies that you're having to store at your house. Um, what else? What else can I tell you right now? I think that's all I have for you right now, but I am going to show you later what I put in the tutor boxes. And those are full of things that kind of get reused every year. Things like rulers, scissors, glue sticks. They don't get reused every year, but, um, I put them in there every year, you know, Sharpies, uh, maps, all those kinds of things. I'm going to go through those with you in a future video.